Netflix's Stranger Things was a breakout hit with audiences in 2016. The 80s sci-fi throwback was one of the streaming giant's biggest series. And with season two fast approaching, here's everything you need to know before you sit on the couch for 13 hours straight, binge watching season two with or without Eggos and Waffles. If this is your first time here and you want to know a little bit more about movies, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything here at Movie Nerds. Season 1 introduces us to Mike, Will, Dustin and Lucas, four nerdy kids who spend their time playing Dungeons and Dragons and being, well, nerds. After the game, Will jumps on his bike and rides home in the dark, alone, in the middle of nowhere. Because, you know, that's what kids did in the 80s. Will mysteriously disappears, so Mike, Dustin and Lucas get their Hardy Boys detective skills on and go look for him in the dark, alone, with no adults, in the middle of nowhere. Seriously. 80s parents did not look after their kids very well. Anyways, that's where we meet a young female Professor X. Her name is Eleven. Oh, and she can move and control stuff with her mind, and has an unhealthy addiction to egos and also recognizes Will in a photo that Mike has. Mike fills in the rest of the group that Eleven knows where Will is, and using some of the best foreshadowing in TV history, flips the Dungeons and Dragons board upside down and uses the Demigorgon to explain that Will is in the upside down and being held by a monster that we haven't even seen yet. All while Will's mum, Joyce, is trying to communicate with Will via a telephone on the wall. Yes, kids, phones had cords back in the day. As well as a monster trying to come through a wall, and also her telling crazy stories that no one believes. Typical Winona. Will's Edward Furlong looking and resident peeping Tom older brother, Jonathan, decides to be a creep as usual and take photos in the bushes of Nancy at a party while she's undressing. He sees Barb at the pool as she gets taken to the upside down. Poor Barb, we hardly knew you. Joyce figures out that she can communicate with Will using an extraordinary amount of Christmas lights, as well as a creepy alphabet light Ouija board on the wall. As a few days pass, Will's body is finally found by the police down at the quarry, but Eleven tells Mike and the rest of the group that she can still hear him. So they head over to the school to use the AV club's radio to contact him. During Will's autopsy, resident Hellboy and Sheriff Jim Hopper cuts into Will's body and finds nothing but stuffing. The kids talk to their science teacher at school and find out that a portal will be needed to get into the Upside Down. So using their nerd skills, they come up with a plan and use compasses to find the big magnetic field that the portal would generate. Fuck you, science! Nancy and Jonathan walk through the dark woods alone doing some monster hunting and somehow come across a deer next to a tree with a hollow inside. Nancy, of course, crawls through it because everyone should crawl through a creepy tree in the woods at night time. She ends up in the Upside Down, sees a monster, gets scared, comes back out, and they both have a sleepover. Aww. The boys keep looking for Will and end up at the quarry where they come across some school bullies who tell Mike to piss his pants and jump off the edge, which he does. He then channels his inner The Boy Who Could Fly, which may not have been released yet, but seriously, it's a great movie, you should go watch it. The bullies are shocked. Spoiler alert, it was Eleven. She breaks one of the bully's arms using her X-Men powers, passes out, and has a flashback of the Demigorgon monster which reveals her to be the one that opened the door to the portal to the Upside Down after she touched it. There's a lesson learned here. Don't touch monsters in creepy black rooms. It never ends well and only leads to the creation of great TV shows. Oh, hang on a second. After that, the kids tell Joyce and Hopper what's going on. They make a sensory deprivation tank for Eleven to communicate with Will. Eleven finds Will and he's hide out in the woods. Joyce and Hopper go to the lab that Eleven came from, go into the Upside Down to get Will. Then they see everyone's favorite red-headed hipster, Barb, dead and bloated. Gross. They find Will, give him CPR, while back in the real world, Mike kisses Eleven. Aww. Then the government agency shows up and chases the kids. Eleven kills them all. Her dad shows up and she kills him too. The Demigorgon escapes into the real world and she kills it, as well as herself. Mike cries, but Will is back so everyone is happy again. But then, Will goes into the bathroom and he coughs up a demigorgon slug. The lights flicker and then he has a flashback of the Upside Down. And then, Season 1 ends. And now you know everything that happened in Season 1 of Stranger Things. We hope you liked our recap of Stranger Things and if you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button and comment below of what was your favourite part of Stranger Things Season 1. And until next time, keep nerding out with Movie Nerds.